In today's episode of the IoT Show, we're going to talk about Azure IoT Central, which is now generally available, announced at Ignite. And uh, we have a very cool demo that shows some of these features that have been announced. We have Marcello, we have Larry, and we have a dozen MX chip devices that are blinking. Uh, I'm sure you're super eager to watch this video. Hey guys, this is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, your host. Uh, today I have Marcello and Larry from the IoT Central team, and they are coming with, as you can see, a nice demo. Um, so guys, nice to have you on the IoT show. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Olivier. So Marcello, you already came on the, on the IoT show. However, I think it's good for you to reintroduce yourself and tell us what you're doing and what you're going to talk about. Sure. I'm Marcello. I'm a program manager in the Azure IoT engineering team, uh -huh. and I work in IoT Central. Okay, how about you, Larry? Yeah, so I'm Larry Jordan. I'm a, a engineering lead inside the IoT Central team. So PM, dev, yeah. awesome. We have the whole thing. And the cloud, right. Okay, so we're here to talk about IoT Central, which is now GA, right? Yay. Which means generally available. You guys can go and, and create your products based on Azure IoT Central now. But Marcello, please tell me, what's new, what's different, uh, what came in was the fact that now it's GA. Oh, thank you, Olivia. There is a ton of new stuff that came in for, for mm -hmm. GA. And to start with, uh, I would say that uh, one of the major new things uh, is actually a new pricing model. Okay. Our Central is now cheaper. Uh, okay. So it only costs uh, for the devices that you connect uh, to IoT Central. Okay. And the first five devices are actually free forever. Okay, so super simple, per device cost, correct. five first are free forever. That's correct. Okay. Love that. Yep, and creating an application, and I'm just about to show you. Okay. It's uh, still super fast that it was before. Okay, and you're going to walk us through some of the features on you while you're doing all of that? Totally. Awesome, got it. So, well, how about we get it? Totally. So uh, we have the usual create application uh, flow. I have to say that uh, uh, as of today, uh, this uh, screen is not the only uh, place to create new IT central applications anymore okay. because you can do that uh, also from the Azure portal which is one of the new things uh, that, that we actually added, okay. uh, along with also support with Azure SDKs uh, and Azure CLI so that you can programmatically uh, or through you know, your Azure console being able to really interact uh, with your IoT Central. Yeah, app. awesome. So like for those who have not been playing with IoT Central in the past, you have to go to that one website. Uh, it was Azure subscription free. Well, during the trial, actually, you had to go through a subscription. Uh, but I, I understand now that actually you can create your app programmatically, you can go through the portal, or you can still go through that UI in that service portal. That's correct. Okay. And, and with the, the IT Central UI, you still have uh, you know, uh, uh, one other thing that you can do, which is uh, being able to create a free trial for seven days without even uh, uh, you know, having a subscription. So okay. you just try it out uh, uh, with really uh, uh, not having to bother about yeah. uh, anything. No credit much. card. No credit no, card. No cost, nothing. no attachment. What, what, okay. Totally. Like so uh, you know, let's start uh, with uh, uh, you know a free application. Yep. Uh, you select free. You pick yep. a template. Uh, you select your name and uh, your custom uh, URL for the application. Okay. You hit create, uh, and uh, you see it takes literally only a few seconds uh, to provision the app and own the underlying services. Because awesome. you know, still the bottom line for IoT Central yep. is not having to deal with the underlying uh, technology. Okay. Um, underneath the and, app and even if his Italian speaks a lot, it did happen in a few seconds while you were speaking. Like literally, not, not cut, not I, edited. I can <laughs> squeeze a lot of words in five yeah, seconds. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can. <laughs> so here, you know, I created an application with a template, uh, and uh, you know, I can start to customize it as much as I can. Okay. Uh, for the sake of time, uh, and also because I speak a lot, uh, uh, <laughs> I just you know uh, uh, came with uh, 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 an application already configured. Yep. I just spent uh, uh, a bunch of uh, uh, a couple of hours. I would say to yeah. kind of customize it in okay. order to uh, uh, give an overview about uh, uh, you know everything that you can do or most of the things that you can do. Okay. Uh, and so the first thing what you when you land uh, in an application as a user, uh, whether you created it uh, from scratch or you're just logging in into an existing application, yeah. is the home page, okay. which is uh, uh, you know your starting point where you uh, can pin tiles uh, uh, and you can really create a customized experience to navigate. Uh, through all the various capabilities. Okay. Uh, you have, uh, you can pin list of uh, devices based on device groups that you define uh, uh, based on specific queries. Uh, okay. uh, you can pin, uh, uh, you know, tiles that are, uh, you know, they update live in order to show you okay. insights uh, right away. And from here, you actually can start and drill down into your applications. Clicking here. 
I can just, uh, 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 you know, see a dashboard of uh, this uh, specific uh, connected device. Okay. And I can see, uh, as I can, you can see here, I have different type of tiles that are showing me different types of information. Okay. Uh, like, for example, I have properties, so metadata related to this specific device. Okay. I have uh, charts uh, and, uh, you know, that, that are showing me specific uh, uh, time windows uh, and time series uh, set of telemetry. Okay. Uh, I can, uh, you know, have uh, uh, displayed position and location on Azure Maps okay. directly here, or display status, KPIs, and so on and so forth. Right. And you customized, you configured that UI actually yourself to Absolutely. drag and drop of these um, widgets and, and then resizing, positioning, and so forth, right? That's correct. Okay. And you can do that uh, yourself by editing the template. Uh, you have a library of uh, tiles uh, that you okay. can add, mm -hmm. or you can just uh, you know, manipulate the one that are already okay. there. Okay. When you're done, Easy. you click done, and uh, you have your device. And every device of this type will actually inherit the same visualization, which is not limited to the visualization. It's actually all the properties and the metadata of the device mm -hmm. from uh, the telemetry. Uh, yeah. This is something that we actually added uh, in the last uh, six months. Uh, it's not only about telemetry, we're also tracking states of devices okay. uh, and also events uh, and also you can visualize the data not only in charts uh, mm -hmm. uh, which are compelling but also you might want to see actual data uh, uh, you know, in the tables, real row data yeah, yeah. in a row so that you can make sense okay. of what's going on. Okay. Uh, and also you can interact remotely with the, with a device uh, through commands. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can, you know, define specific commands that your device is capable to respond okay. to and you can just execute that from uh, from here. Okay. And uh, uh, one of the new things that we actually introduced for, mm -hmm. uh, uh, for a GA is the ability to do this type of interaction with devices at scale. So that uh, you don't have to only interact with one device at a time, okay. but you can define jobs uh, uh, with the list of the activities and the task that you want to perform against one okay. or four devices mm -hmm. and just execute the jobs against a group of devices okay. and you will be able to do that. As okay, well. awesome. All that from the IoT Central dashboard. You don't have to leave it, you don't have to code for that. Everything Absolutely. Okay. No coding required. That's this kind of, uh, you know, the bottom line right. of IoT Central. Yeah, but it's been coded, right? <laughs> so developers <laughs> still have their, you know, importance in that story, right? <laughs> totally. And before I it over to, you know, to Larry, one last thing yeah. uh, that is particularly uh, uh, important mm -hmm. uh, is the ability to define specific rules in IoT Central okay. uh, uh, in order to automate specific behaviors. Okay. Uh, like, for example, I have here a temperature watch, okay. uh, uh, which is monitoring for a specific condition, which is okay. a temperature uh, uh, that uh, that uh, equals to a specific value, okay. is not only a single temperature, uh -huh. but is the average temperature across a, spe a specific time window. Okay. So I can uh, uh, you know, play with the time window and the aggregation window in order okay. to really define and really look for the condition that I'm, uh, uh, I'm going for. Okay. And then I can trigger actions. Actions, okay. uh, the one that I have here is an integration with uh, uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365, okay. uh, okay. uh, specifically Dynamics 365 field services. Uh, but but uh, if I want, uh, if I edit my rule, uh, yeah. I can then uh, you know replace this action or add uh, other mm -hmm. type of actions. Okay. And uh, another thing that we are introducing uh, for for GA is the ability to call uh, webhooks okay. uh, and the ability to call Azure Functions so directly okay. from uh, IoT Central. So now you can do email, webhooks, Microsoft Flow, and Azure Functions. That's correct. You, like yeah. You, pretty much cover it all. Right? Well, it doesn't cover it all, but because there is another functionality that yeah. uh, we are introducing for, okay. for GA, which is the ability to uh, export uh, data outside the application okay. uh, through a uh, uh, continuous data export feature that I can okay. uh, activate in my central app mm -hmm. that will uh, export continuously all the data coming from all the connected devices okay. uh, to a blob store that I can provide in my resource okay. application. But uh, it's not only about the row telemetry, mm -hmm. but it's row telemetry augmented uh, with the contextual reference data that I define. So if I have metadata of my device, yeah, like yeah. my device is uh, installed to a specific customer, mm -hmm. that piece of metadata will be exported along with the telemetry that it. has been generated. Okay. So for example, something that I can do with this type of thing uh, is uh, build up a Power BI, Power BI dashboard, okay. uh, uh, meshing up data from different IoT Central applications, Mm -hmm. or from IoT Central, from IoT, and okay. other types of business okay. applications. Makes sense. I have an example of dashboard here. Um, that uh, you know is just uh, a very simple example of uh, you yep. know what you can, the way you can integrate Power BI with IoT Central, okay. and. Uh, uh, and actually, the, the, the nice thing is that uh, uh, we are making available a solution template that is available in AppSource uh, okay. uh, that will automatically rely on the continuous data export feature uh, and will uh, automatically deploy all the necessary service in order to uh, you know, make available a Power BI dashboard that you can then customize as much as you want. Awesome.
That's a lot, indeed. Yes. There's one more feature that actually Larry is here to uh, correct to demo non none of the the lesson uh, of these uh, of these uh, features because it's actually about provisioning the devices, right? Yes. So and actually, there is more than that. Uh, but for that, uh, we'll uh, even invite our, our viewers. Uh, like to create an app and uh, yeah, exactly I think and, and actually we're gonna we're gonna certainly have like documentation and and because now it's GA and it's been announced at Ignite uh, you can actually find all that information on the docs and and on the blogs and things like that uh, what we're getting here is you know the high level picture of what's going on but uh, definitely lots of things to cover indeed awesome. So device provisioning service, right? Because yes. right yeah. until now, the scenario was IoT Central was to say, I have a type of device, I want to connect a new device, let me get a connection string, let me put it on my device, that one device was connecting. So yes. great for prototyping, not ideal for actual production Indeed. You know, scenarios. And also another uh, you know, thing that comes with IoT Central getting GA is uh, you know, its ability to really handle workloads uh, for uh, you mm -hmm. know, enterprise grade deployments. Yep. Uh, and of course, uh, if you need uh, to handle a lot of devices, you need to onboard those devices is uh, in a yep. way more manageable way. Yep. And this is yep. why we introduced the support for device provisioning service in IT Central, mm -hmm. and Larry here has been working on that specific features, and yeah. uh, we'll be able to demonstrate that uh, uh, with uh, you know, a set of MX chip devices okay. that we put together in order to, to show that. Cool. Let's do it. Because right. people have been staring at these devices yeah. since the beginning of the presentation. <laughs> wondering why they're turned like, off. Why are they not using these? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, so one of the uh, contributions that I, uh, my team made uh, to GA was to be able to provision devices at scale, right? So the implementation of that is based on the device provisioning service that we already have out there today. And we added in uh, a capability also to support um, group enrollments through SAS keys. So everybody's kind of used to using the shared access keys that you get into, or the asymmetric keys that you use to get into the system and into IoT Hub. Okay. Okay, hey, ready? Yep. Okay. So one of the things that we introduced in this in our DPS implementation was the use of SAS keys. And so now we support both uh, certificate-based authentication and SAS key authentication. Mm -hmm. So this is our um, MX chip uh, Azure dev, dev kits that we've had out there for a while. And I've actually pre-configured them to be connected up to an IoT central application. And so what I'll do is I'll show you an import of those 12 device names into the system, turn them on, and have them provisioned. So yeah. let's just make sure that... So when you say you had them prepared to connect to, um, to IoT Central, actually you had them prepared to connect to a DPS instance that you get when you deploy an IoT Central application, correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Yes. Okay, so now we're impo importing the 12 devices, and you'll see here yep. I've got them named out, uh, and they correlate to these items on the board. Okay. So let's flip it on. And what we should begin to start to see is the uh, board starting to start up and then connect to the Wi-Fi, uh, get connected up through DPS, yeah. provisioned into the hub, and then start sending data over the wire. So that's kind of the, the flow that they're going to go through, right? That's so a our Christmas key, tree. Yes, it is. <laughs> and our key thing is, is that we want to see the Wi-Fi come on. Okay. Right? <clears throat> and so we're connecting. There we go. We got Wi-Fi. And we got some already connected up. You can see the little Azure light on yeah, the dev yeah, kit is yeah. actually coming on. Awesome. Yeah. It looks like they've all connected. So yeah. the change here is you'll notice that when I imported, all the devices were seen as being registered. Now mm -hmm. when I refresh, and yeah, let's function F5. you'll see that I've got changed to all provision. So all devices are now online sending data over the wire and you can tell that they're sending and then uh, you can see the success rates of everything that's going on there. The reds will start turning into greens and they'll be very happy. And so when we come into an item here, we should start seeing data flowing uh, and you'll start to see the little dots that are coming in there right there. Okay. You can see the yep. data coming over yep. the wire. Yep. Right. And what it took is basically just have them run some piece of code that actually has uh, some unique identifier connects to that DPS instance because it knows the scope ID of that DPS, Yes, right? exactly. And so you basically prepare these devices to connect to that specific instance of DPS. And then DPS does the job of provisioning the device in IT Hub, which is the one powered 
uh, powering uh, sorry IoT Central, and then boom, they appear in IoT. Yeah, Central then they, awesome. and they appear, yeah. and then now you've actually got twelve things. You start just doing the same things that Marcel was doing, yep, yep. building out the dashboards and everything. You're ready yeah. to go. Yeah. So this is our kind of device, uh, you know, devices at scale. Yeah. Yeah. And awesome. also, there is a security uh, advantage that you have uh, mm -hmm. uh, with IoT Central relying on DPS, uh, which is the ability to also block those devices. So yes. if you don't want those devices to be able to connect anymore because you lost the uh, property of that device, yep, uh, yep. you can do it from IoT Central without having uh, okay. uh, to yeah, really you can go have access and block to a device, device yeah. and that will actually uh, you know eliminate it from sending data over the wire and stuff like that okay so. awesome okay cool, cool. Yeah. so devices at scale tons of other, th other things that are now in Azure IoT Central uh, which is now generally available yeah and yeah. free to try and free to try thanks guys for coming on the IoT show thanks guys for watching and uh, don't forget to subscribe thank you